Oh, hey there. Didn't see you there. My name is Fukuyo, founder <laughs> and host of History.com. Today we have an excellent program for you regarding the events of Pearl Harbor. Today we have philanthropist and history expert, Preston Gross. Welcome, Preston Gross. So, Preston, could you tell us a little bit about what happened on that day? Well, it was 8 a.m. December 7th, 1941, and there were two hours of attacks in Hawaii by the Japanese. Six Japanese aircraft carriers struck the U.S. soil. 3,500 Americans were either killed or wounded that day. 18 U.S. ships were damaged. George D. Franner, who was actually aboard the USS Arizona during the time of the attack, was actually stated as saying that, quote, the blood started to flow real fast, end quote. It really shows the tremendous damage that was done yeah. during the time of the attack. Right? It must have been an incredibly traumatic event for everyone who was there. Yeah. Dr. Preston, could you tell us a little bit about the events that led up to Pearl Harbor and what made the attacks happen? Well, it's really hard to pick one event and say that that was the trigger. You know, September 1940 is the date I usually pick when I'm writing about it. and. Uh, it was really after the Japanese invasion of French Indochina when uh, the U.S. actually placed a trade embargo on Japan and preventing uh, exports to Japan of uh, very uh, important uh, goods like steel or scrap iron. And uh, I really think that that was uh, an important step in leading up to the, uh, the event of Pearl Harbor. And how did the Japanese respond to the trade embargo? Well, there isn't really an exact response from the Japanese. And, but I, but I really like to say, and I like to tell my students, I like to write in my books that, that really it was April of 1941. And it was actually the neutrality treaty that the Japanese signed with the Soviet Union to, in a way, prepare for war with the US or Britain by preventing attacks from the side of Russia. So uh, literally, geographically, it, was, it would have protected Japan from uh, the western side, if you would, or northern side, if you may. So, as 1941 was coming to an end, the U.S. was, was really um, not interested in starting a war, especially the American people. They, they were sort of fed up and were really interested in just being isolated from the rest of the world. However, the Japanese, they really wanted to start a war on the Pacific Front because they knew as the Soviet Union was uh, diminishing in power. I, I really believe that the, the Japanese were very interested in that war. And um, they were bloodthirsty. Not all of them, of course. Uh, uh, but the people in power in Japan were definitely interested in uh, starting that war. Could the US have predicted this attack? And did they know it was going to happen? I really think that yes, they, they did. And it was right after they broke that Japanese diplomatic code that existed. And once that was broken, there was really, it was, the attack was, I would say, inevitable. As I write my books. Geographically speaking, if this is the United States and uh, Hawaii would be over here, uh, Japan would, would just be right around the corner. And uh, Hawaii is really just right in between the U.S. and Japan, which really shows how uh, good of a, a uh, battlefront that place actually is. And uh, maybe not good is the right word, but how almost uh, inevitable it was for that to be the location of battle. Thank everybody for watching our show today, and I would like to thank Preston Gross for all of his valuable input. We'll see you next week. Next week on History Channel.